Hey everybody, Renee here, founder and CEO of Renzo Box, and I am an architect. And I'm here on day 26 of 32 days of videos. Thanks so much for joining. All right, so um, I am an architect. I design buildings. I, I don't do it so much anymore, but I've did it for over 10 years. And now I'm designing a little box for the beauty industry. Makes so much sense, right? Um, <laughs> So I, yesterday's video, I talked about what um, having a beauty startup has taught me about architecture. And today I want to talk about what architecture has taught me about having a beauty startup. So the field of architecture, it is very romanticized um, in the everyday world for the non-architects out there, for the lay people out there. Everyone thinks of architecture as like, oh, it's such a wonderful profession. It's like the perfect combination of art and science and engineering just all woven together. And yes, it is those things. It is those things. It is also a lot of work. <laughs> and most of it um, is a lot of coordination. So for example, when it comes to a building, first, there's a lot of stakeholders. There's the owner. There's the contractor who's gonna build it. There's the architect who's gonna be involved in designing it. Then there's um, the city planning office who's going to make sure that codes are enforced. There's the subcontractors of the contractor that's gonna build it. Um, there's the neighbors, there's the homeowners, there's, there's all these people. Um, and then if it's a building that say, uh, is actually being built for other people, like say for example, a hospital. A hospital has doctors and nurses that work in it and that's their place of work, but it also has patients that go there for procedures and might have to be there for a long time. So there's, there's essentially like the tenants that are coming in and out. So there's a lot of people involved, lots of stakeholders that are involved when it comes to building a building. And that doesn't even get into like the actual building itself, like all of the sort of systems that have to be coordinated together. Um, you know, from the foundation systems, the structural system, I mean, just making insulation systems, what kind of cladding, what kind of windows, what kind of surface treatments, what kind of, you know, all of the things, the electrical and the plumbing and the air conditioning and all of that stuff has to be woven together into this, you know, this, this object, this perfectly seamless, and hopefully it works for all those different stakeholders that I mentioned. Um, and we, we hope that it's beautiful and that it functions and it lasts for a really long time. So architecture is really about this, it, it's like this grand orchestration of, of just so many different disparate things and coming together into something beautiful and something long lasting and something that hopefully improves the lives of all of those stakeholders. And that is what I took and applied to, um, that's my, my biggest learning from architecture that has been so helpful in applying to a startup and specifically to Renzo Box. If you think about Renzo Box um, and kind of like distill it into its parts, it, it is very much like architecture. Um, so there's, I'll start with the stakeholders. There's a lot of stakeholders involved when it comes to Renzo Box. So there's each individual person, of course, that owns a Renzo Box. Um, and they have their own needs when it comes to their makeup, right? And I'm always constantly thinking about um, about their needs or about your needs. If you have a Renzo box or if you're a future owner of a Renzo box, I'm constantly thinking like, how might you use this? What is your makeup routine like? Like, how are you gonna, how is this gonna fit into your daily life? Um, then outside of that, there's also, you know, on the flip side, there's the brands and all these different, they're, they're trying to get their products to you. And I want to make sure that Renzo box is the best way and a fan, you know, a really great way for them to get their products to you. And so I'm constantly thinking about like, well, how, what will make the brands happy? What do they need? You know, what is their business model? What, um, what kind of products do they want to launch next season? And, and, and how do they get their brand voice and vision um, in, into your eyes as the customer, even though it's coming through Renzo Box? So they're also stakeholders that I'm thinking about. So I've got lots of different stakeholders, right? Um, but then it actually, like the, the logistics of creating the physical Renzo box itself is complex. There's all, you know, manufacturing that I have overseas, and then there's manufacturing of the pods that happens here in the United States, and then the supply chain of, of all the things that have to come together and coordinate together. Um, then as, as every business and every startup has, there's, you know, uh, 
just the finances and the things you have to run in, in, in the business, you know, how are you going to, what's the go to market strategy? Um, how are you going to acquire customers? How much does it cost to acquire customers? Um, what's your cash flow situation like? Um, you know, what is the, what is the uh, inventory uh, modeling forecasting looking like? Um, so there's a lot of aspects of, of, of just this one little box. <laughs> it's just a little box. Um, but there's so many aspects of it that have to be thought through and have to kind of like really be woven together in order to make it su successful. And that's very much like how um, a building is. So that is the biggest lesson from architecture that has helped me so much in uh, building Renzo Box. So lesson to all of my architecture friends out there, if you're good at coordinating and getting a building built, you might be good at building a startup. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. <laughs> All right, that's all I have for tonight. I will see you guys tomorrow. Good night.